Hello, we're here today with uh, impresarius Xavier Hollander, who annually presents uh, English spoken theater. Now, this has some history to it, and I'd like to find out what that is. Well, the original history started about 20 years ago when I moved to Holland from America, and I met some Czechoslovakian people. They're all artists, either musicians or cabaret chairs, and that's how we started our so called house concerts. In other words, I'd give dinners, and after dinner, one of the guests would play or perform. And slowly but surely, this grew like a sort of, yeah, a ritual. Uh, my Easter brunches, Christmas dinners, and birthday parties have always been notorious. I don't think that's a bad word. I've always been known for uh, offering people more than food and drinks. And they usually have some form of entertainment, whether it's a transvestite show or a comedy acts or poets. I've had a lot of poets here or storytellers, I know a very nice South African storyteller. But only recently, since I've been discovering those little quote-unquote jewels at the Edinburgh Theatre Festival, I've been going there for 16 years, uh, have I decided to bring them what we call in Dutch tussen de schuifdeur, between your, only do or your own doors of your house. And fortune had it that I met the man who manages the Batanian Cloister, which is a beautiful theatre, a uh, converted to a beautiful theatre and has a terrific acoustic as well, and seats 120 people easily. So I've decided to, to combine forces with him, and he uh, let me have the use of his uh, cloister for two days. But I still like to have the charm of the living room ambiance, which of course gets people very curious, like where does the happy hooker live, and you know how does she do it? And uh, uh, so far I've had nothing but raving reviews. So this year you're going to have it at both places. Uh, how many people actually will be in your home for this? Well, I've just checked my... Uh, I'm making spreadsheets. I mean, all those things I've never done in my life. I'm an impresario. Impresarius is not as easy as I thought it would be. I need a lot of people helping me. So we just printed out all the lists of what people have books for. And I've come to about 60 people maximum on Saturday night at my house, and that's already full then. Because everybody wants to come on the weekend, probably. And the cloister I could do with quite a bit more. The cloister has been half filled up so far. But I'm going this afternoon to a uh, Hasanut uh, Hebrew song uh, performance in the Berlagebrug, which has 500 people. And I come well equipped with my programs. I have the permission of the Yods Kulturel Gebeuren as well. And that is to spread the news, uh, do the networking for my play. Because if there's one thing that's happening, especially as it's a Jewish play, or Jewish-oriented play, uh, th they stick together, you know, I'm half Jewish, so I know the problem. When, whenever you go somewhere and there's some Jewish events, the Yiddish festivals or whatever, they get together because maybe there's so few of them left in Holland. And so I know when I go to a gathering of 500, in general, Jewish people, I can get at least 50 or 60 people to come to my play as well. Okay, speaking of your play, uh, could you tell us what this year's performance is going to be? The performance is called The Prince of West End Avenue, and uh, it's about an old man, Otto Corner, in an old age home who takes it upon himself to direct uh, this play by Hamlet, or a variation on the theme. And he's actually portraying the 16 different characters that are supposed to participate. And he puts all the accents on, from the German Jew to the Russian Jew to the... Uh, it's, it's drama, it's pathos, it's emotional, it's funny also. And, uh, of course, there's a slight referral, a referral to the, the Holocaust past of some of those people. But it's not one of those tear-jerkers you, oh, again, you know, World War II situation. But he briefly refers to, to incidents that happened to him during the Second World War. And it's a terrific actor. He's only 34 years old. When I met him, of course, after the stage performance, I couldn't believe it, because he plays an 84-year-old man, but so realistic. And it's a very fine, refined man also. Uh, and he comes as his director and his wife. In fact, they're having a, a five-year anniversary they're going to celebrate in Amsterdam, so this should be fun. And after the play, of course, uh, I have a second attraction, which is Alex Jakobowicz, who is a quite a well-known, especially in Germany, uh, American Orthodox Jewish uh, marimba player who used to play with his marimbas, with his huge instruments, three meters so, uh, in the streets, especially in Hamburg or Berlin. And uh, I've had about six people call me or email me, because I'm also reachable by email, uh, if they 
if he was still on because they've seen him and they were absolutely mesmerized by his performance. Now I've had a few problems with him so this is the part of the impresario that I didn't count on. Like if you have somebody who says look how much are the tickets, uh, I'm a fan of yours, you know, this is how it started f five months ago and are you putting on a play, yes can I come, fine and now he starts hitting me for lots of money because he smells greed in a way but uh, we've made up yesterday, we've had a very nasty email exchange and I said I'm going to take you away from the program and put other people on but that he didn't want so he wants to come anyway I said I guarantee you, you can sell a lot of CDs he's got seven kids like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs I didn't know you know being Orthodox Jewish from one wife he has seven kids to feed so but that shouldn't be really my story so to say but I think he would be a very nice act after we've had a break of half an hour there'll be food at the Batanian cloister there'll even be kosher food for those of you who are interested so after the break the play is kind of heavy at the end uh, this would be nice and vivacious and hopefully cheer people up when they walk out in a happy feeling but I like to touch the soul the neshuma in the Jewish uh, terminology neshuma is uh, the, the warm feeling of soul and humor uh, and, and tragedy combined I believe and that's one thing this play the Prince of Western Time which Carrie Shale by the way is the actor's name uh, will provoke in people they'll, they'll talk about it for a long time afterwards and I hope he'll be back with another play he's doing called Charlotte based on the play from Charlotte Solomon who's like Anne Frank was uh, quite well known through her paintings as a young girl in the Second World War, which she got smuggled out in the concentration camps. And so that's the sex next project he's working on. But I'd like to do this like once every half a year, you said annually. I, I've done it so far once every half a year. And because Amsterdam, I sometimes call it Amsterdam, Amsterdam is kind of doomed to have only stand-up comedy, which is fun once or twice, but it hasn't got any serious English spoken theatre. And there's so many people that are craving for good English theatre. So that's what I pick. Little jewels, uh, maybe someday I'll get into big productions. But if I want to keep it cozy and, and have this Nishuma feeling, I have to do it still between my living room door. And if I didn't have the cooperation of some of my friends, I don't think I'd manage. In fact, I have a red eye now, I'm overstressed, I'm on the computer till four hour, four o'clock in the morning. My voice is gone, but it's, it, I hope the end result will be great.